something else is just coming through for me that's really random is we are um mm -hmm. it's not a formal contract whatever you say we've had all the discussions that need to be had for us to install a food forest in prisons in florida wow yeah that's apparently amazing. there's 67 prisons we already have a relationship with the what? corrections facility if i'm saying that right we just met them recently they do fundraisers and sponsorship and everything like that uh so we'll be the team that will go through that's and, amazing um, dude. yeah it's absolutely it's, it's it's incredible to have that type of contribution that type of impact on people for sure bro that's amazing yeah because yeah. people a lot of time people get sent to that system mm -hmm. the prison system we, we like and it's not very rehabilitating like it almost the opposite it's the opposite it's yeah. like you leave it's like they want they it's like they feel like mm -hmm. it's way deeper than just you know like sending them there and doing their time with it back like these are people man. it made me think of and and this isn't to single out women yeah. but i believe the facilities that we'll be working with is just guys so that's why i'm referencing this but as a as a masculine man like we're here to protect and to serve and yeah. when you take a man and you put him in a cell the only thing they can develop is ego because they're just sitting with themselves and it's wow. identification ego is just saying you're over there and i'm over here there's nothing wrong with it but that's the only state that they can live in right so you're depriving them yeah exactly everything's separate from each other you're over there i'm over here it's creating the very divide yeah. that is the death of of, of life right and instead of seeing the harmony of us all being together they're over there and i'm over here but let's talk about a man that's here to provide and to serve you're depriving them of the very opportunity to do so wow. which is to go out and to provide for people and to protect for people so just by bringing in this small little thing right call it a 10 yard by 10 yard square of a garden right they can now have a sense of i'm building something i'm creating something i'm protecting something i'm serving something right so that alone can can bleed through their entire life wow. right but even a, in those walls even in those walls right because the they progress. can think about it they Dude. can be in there thinking about the progress and then they go out there the next day and it's like oh new leaf like we all know that feeling right you can't not help but be like oh you know what i mean it's growing i don't care who you are right bro. until yeah. one day it grows so much you can't even keep track of it but here's another thing there was a study uh shout out to marcos for getting this study i think it was like 2004 or something like that was they did a study on uh inmates prisoners i don't even like using that term but whatever uh, people in those situations uh, that did some gardening, I think it was on site, and their responses. And basically, and I don't remember the words that it was said, but it's just this notion of like, shit doesn't happen in the garden. You protect the garden. Everything mm -hmm. feels more at ease. You know what I mean? Like there's just this natural sense. You don't have to tell people to protect the garden. Just You just don't fuck around in the garden, right? Like you just don't do that. It's not where it happens, right? So there's just this sense that's natural. It's innate right? That you don't have to teach. Mm. We don't need this knowledge of understanding. We are it already, right? And we're just revealing it. So these studies were just wow, just impactful, of just showing like what something that simple can do. And the answer is always to go back to the land. Yeah. It's always. Dude, totally. It's sacred, bro. Yeah. Dude, I love that. And by the way, the first time I was introduced to gardening was in an institution, bro. Are you serious? It was at like this boarding <laughs> school, hardcore boarding school I got sent to, by the way, guys. And I went there and I graduated there. Yeah. And it was a blessing. It was in, it was really intense uh, and hardcore, bro. Mm. It was up in New York, upstate New York. Okay. And the gar the garden was my favorite thing ever. This mm. guy Jan, who was a real mentor of mine and a real awesome dude, like changed my life. Man, had spiritual experiences there. You know, mm. like the first ever, like totally sober, totally you know, just like up in the mountains, yeah. gardening with this dude. Um, Bro, and it, it changed my life, bro. That's amazing. Yeah. So it was just like one little piece that brought me to the land. Yeah. But um, amazing. I'm so grateful you guys are doing that. Bro. Yeah, it's a blessing, dude. It's humbling for sure. <sighs> bro, because that's like ownership for them. Yeah. That's, fucking... that's a really good word. Let's ownership go. and responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, this is mine. I get to take care of it. Yeah. Not like pride or mine, but like nah. the pride of like, this is my team. I got my team. Totally. Yeah. Healthy pride. That type of ownership. Bro. Yeah. 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 We're in the garden. It's existential.